All right, we're about to do the JK spring swap in a, is it 98 or 99? 98. 98 Jeep TJ. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack up the front end first, put some jack stands underneath the back, keep the axle suspended. We're gonna remove the tires, the sway bar links, and the shocks. And hopefully that should give the axle enough drop to get the springs out. If not, I got spring compressors. But here's all the parts right here, so we'll get her jacked up and see what happens. Here's all the springs and shocks, and we also got a TJ upper shock bar pin eliminator kit we'll install, and a shitload of beer to keep us busy for the job. We're gonna pull that shock out, upper and lower, just swapping them out, and then we're gonna pull the sway bar link off right up top there. Do the same on the opposite side, and we'll see if we can drop her down enough to pull the spring out. If not, We'll have to compress it and get it out. Just got the nut off the top of the shock and the hardest part with that is, especially living in Canada where everything corrodes, that you just can't spin the nut off. You gotta put a wrench up top, it's a number six that fits. And then a wrench down below and it's painfully fucking slow. <laughs> Now I'll heat that fucking bitch up. Sweet bar links are pretty much pooched. There we go. Irving, this side's pooped. Oh, this one's got the spring clip on it still. Spring retainer clip off. Gonna make it a little bit easier. Getting the fucking spring out. So you got the springs here. The TJ ones, the Warren one. This is the JK off of 2011. Yep. 2011 four door. You can see right here, it doesn't seem to be really any difference but the spring rate is different than the 2011 the JK model so it's supposed to give a smoother ride first shock went in no issues at all I'm gonna do the opposite side get that in get the shocks done up sway bar links back in a little, little fucked I'd say but who cares There. Kind of a notch where it sits. Yeah, okay. We're just ready to stick the front shock in, and the front part is done. Once we get in place, we'll jack it up, tighten it up properly, and then we'll let her down, put the tires back on, and then do the rear part of the Jeep. nice when they're new when you can put a gun to the top and spin them on fuck when they're used good luck all right we got the front tires back on the shocks are installed I didn't really show that because no sense I sh you know did a video of them taking them off no one wants to see bolts going back in front is done we're gonna lower it down jack up the back and then work on the back hopefully that won't take a couple hours but so far so good all right it's motherfucking beer time now Stopped to have a beer. Fucking Trevor's down there putting in the shock. Holy, what a fucking shit show this is. I got my four ton jack in there with the spreader on the fucking tire. And nothing is making this thing fucking split. We heat it up. Yeah, there's no more room in the fucking jack. Four tons, and I can't even spread this. I can get this tire off, Jesus. Oh. 
Well, we got that tire off. What a fucking shit show. Trevor drove around in the back alley doing figure eights and shit. I break that tire free. That was the most seized tire I've ever seen in my fucking life. Now we're having on beer number two. Then jacking up the Jeep, it slips off the fucking jack. Doesn't make matters any fucking better. And the worst part of the job hasn't come yet, and that's removing the upper shock mounts. Because that's the worst fucking job. I bet we'll see what's gonna happen. It's a shit show, so I suspect it's only gonna get worse. Get easier is jack up the one side of the axle. Come back over to this side now. Pull it out. I cut that little half moon off the spring because it can't go over the bump stop and then that's the factory one. So the rear springs are actually quite a bit taller. We just got that spring out, we're gonna put this one and we're gonna to have to compress it quite a bit to get it in. Because the problem is once you get one side out by jacking up the other end, since these springs are so much more taller, you have to use a spring compressor to get the other one because the sway bar links are disconnected. I mean, you could probably, if you wanna get really creative, is drop the upper control arms, but just as easy to compress the spring and away we go. So here it is with the JK springs in. The rear end is definitely higher. The front end is basically the stock height, so probably he said talking about getting some coil spacers for the front to kind of bring it up. Now that we've got the coil spacers in the front, brought it up two more inches. Jeep looks a little bit more leveled out now, where before it was kind of an angle like that, so it looks a hell of a lot better. There we are right there, got the transfer cage drop in place. All right, it's motherfucking beer time. I'm gonna leave the video there of installing the JK Springs into a TJ. Now, I know we didn't quite finish the project because it's still got the rear shocks to put in. I don't know if or when that's going to happen. So I'm just going to end the video now and then I'll just do a video of doing those shocks afterwards because we're doing a rear pin uh, relocator kit so that'll be on a separate video. But now the pros and the cons, I'm not exactly sure what JK model he got the springs and shocks out of. But as you can tell in the video, the rear springs definitely brought it up. The springs in the front were no difference in size than the OEM factory ones. Now, is this a direct swap? In our case, it wasn't. I can't speak for all, but I'm just giving you my experiences. So, in the end, not only did he buy those springs and shocks used, he had to buy two in spacers for the front, retake apart the front, put those spacers in. We also had to buy transfer case lowering kit because once everything was installed, the driveline angles changed and he was complaining about a vibration in his driveline when he was shifting down. So the TKH drop was put in that cured that problem. So is it a simple, simple cheap budget lift? I think in the end it's not worth your time and money. I mean there's lots of lifts out there in the market for like between the three and seven hundred dollar range which are cheap because that's how much this project will end up costing you in the end unless of course you're going to get all your parts for dirt cheap but anyways i'm going to get going if you guys have any questions or comments post them below otherwise thanks for watching